Good morning. Today, we're going to read a book called When We Were Alone. In the past, Indigenous children in the United States and Canada were taken from their families and made to live in residential schools. They were not treated well there, and they were often made to give up their culture and their language in addition to being made to leave their families. This is an example of a really hard, sad thing that happened in our country's history. But it's really important that we remember that it happened and that we talk about it so that we can make sure it never happens again and that we all continue to work towards justice and equality for all people. So this book is written by David A. Robertson and illustrated by Julie Flett. When we were alone. Today, I helped Michael comb in her flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nokom, why do you wear so many colors? I asked. Nokom said, well, Mrs. Om. When I was your age at home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colors, Nokom said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. But sometimes in the fall, when we were alone and the leaves had turned to their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground. We would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us and we would be colorful again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokom said, I always wear the most beautiful colors. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate and they reached all the way to the ground. When my Kokom turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Nokom, why do you wear your hair so long? I asked. Nokom said, well, no sisim. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud. But at the school I went to far away from home, they cut off all our hair. Our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. Why did you have to wear your hair like that? I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Nokom said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes in the spring, when we were alone and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground. We would braid them into the short hair they had given us, and we would have long hair again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokom said, I always wear my hair very long. After my Kokom had finished the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle dress dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, here, little bird, eat so you will get big and strong. And her words sounded just like a poem. Nokom, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nokom said, well, no sisim. When I was your age at home in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school I went to far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. 
all the children, children used their strange words, and we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language, I asked. They didn't like that we spoke our language, Nokom said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. But sometimes in the summer, when we were alone, but our, and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always speak my language. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my Kokom in the backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate bannock. The tea was hot and sweet and the bannock was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My Kokom and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nokom, why do you and Nokomis always spend time together? I asked. Nokom said, well, no Sisim. When we were your age, at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But this, at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nokomi separated? I asked. They didn't like when we were with family, Nokom said, because when we were together, we thought too much of home. But sometimes in the winter, when we were alone and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts and in the crisp, cold air, we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nokom said as she reached over and held my uncle's hand and mine, I am always with my family.